Good evening, New Mexico. Summer vacation is only just getting started in the metro, but it's already been a violent and deadly one for our teens. Today, Albuquerque police identified the three victims in a deadly house party shooting over the weekend. 18-year-old Marcos Perez, Jordan Johnson, and 19-year-old Nick Ortega. Someone shot and killed them during a birthday party at a home near Montgomery and Washington early Sunday morning. Just hours later, police say 19 year old Jasmine Lerma's ex boyfriend shot and killed her at a home in the North Valley. And police also confirmed today 18 year old Adrian Porras died after someone shot him in a neighborhood near Unser and Ladera last week. Griffin Rushton joins us tonight with more on this discussion about teens and guns. We're talking about five teens now killed in less than a week. Yeah, it's a staggering number, especially when you consider that we've seen four teens already shot and killed throughout Albuquerque just this year alone. And we also know, of course, the the recent uh, shooter in Farmington with the recent mass shooting we had there was also just 18 year olds, 18 years old. So we're talking about a lot of recent proof about this troubling pattern between teens and guns. Yeah, and we're seeing it play out again in just this past week. Anti-gun violence advocates say this trend is not new here in Albuquerque, but they are urging a lot of caution this summer. I hate to say it, but do not go to parties right now. I mean, do not go to parties right now. Miranda Viscoli with New Mexicans to Prevent Gun Violence says it's becoming near impossible for teens to avoid guns in Albuquerque. What we are hearing from the students on a regular basis is that every party has a gun or more than one gun. And if you want to get killed, you go to a party. That, that's what they're telling us. It's a trend APD Chief Harold Medina admits is getting out of hand. There are more and more teens armed with firearms now than any other period that I've ever seen. UNM trauma surgeon Dr. Richard Miskimmon says he's noticed the trend as well from inside the emergency room. And this has increased from what used to be like two a month to what's now about four to five a month. An increase that comes with a heavy emotional toll. And this year alone, I've I've had... I believe six people under the age of 17 that have uh, been shot and died uh, either in the emergency department or in the operating room. Viscoli believes the rise in teen gun violence is largely connected to an increase in gun sales during the pandemic. So when you get a surge in gun sales, it takes about two years for those guns to start ending up in unsafe hands, and that's what we're seeing. She believes some teens are actively buying and selling those guns through social media, but adds most don't have to look too far. What we're hearing in our gun violence prevention workshops is that our teenagers are really frightened that they're living in homes where guns are not locked up, and it's hard for them to ask their parents to lock up their guns. Getting their hands on a gun is one thing, but Dr. Miskimmins suggests the violent tendencies come from elsewhere. There's a lack of uh, conflict resolution skills among a lot of the, the teenagers and, and those that are affected by gun violence, um, that it's difficult sometimes to just walk away and be okay with walking away. And while that's not an uncommon trait for teens, both believe guns are taking it to a new deadly level. Back in the day, kids would get in a fist fight, right? <laughs> or they would, but now when you put so many guns in our communities, it becomes the norm. Both Viscoli and Dr. Miskimmon say they're recommending that teens just walk away or just go home when guns you know, are brought out at parties. But if they really want to stay safe, just don't go to these parties in the first place. Yeah, some good advice there, but of course, hard to implement. So Griffin, anything we can do at this point to keep the guns out of the teens' hands in the first place? Well, Viscoli says parents have to start locking up their guns. As you heard, a lot of these teens say they're just out and about in their homes. She also says efforts from state lawmakers uh, to block straw purchases, that's when someone buys a gun for another person, and also attempts to raise the minimum age to buy guns to 21 years old are also a good step. She also believes a 14-day waiting period on gun sales could also do a lot of help here. All right, Griffin, thanks for the update.